This is a quote from Soren Kierkegaard's April 26, 1848 book, Christian Discourses, as translated by the Hongs in 1997, pages 245 and 246 of the Princeton University Press edition. He's writing about Christian belief and unbelief. Do not be deceived by appearances. There is much deception in the language of people's daily conversation. When, for example, someone says, I had fully resolved to venture this and that for this and that cause, but then this one and that one talked me out of my resolution. This sounds quite acceptable. But the one who knows the human heart sees very well the connection. The man has not been resolved in the deepest sense, because then he would not have turned to this one and that one, but would have acted. The one whom falling in love does not make silent is not in love, and so also with the true resolution. So it is also when someone living in Christendom says he would very much like to believe, if only he could get settled definitely what he is to believe. This sounds quite acceptable, and yet there is deceit in it. He is unwilling to venture out into the dangers in decisions where faith comes into existence. He is unwilling to become alone, alone in the life perils of the spirit, and therefore he speaks about this difficulty. In the anxiety of his soul, he is not willing to risk everything, and therefore he talks in this other way. He who is the object of faith, he is surely a good deal nearer to a person than at the distance of 1800 years through the submerged connection of tradition, or if there is the slightest doubt here, through the delays and possible misunderstandings of 1800 years. The nearest way is the way of life perils. The most comfortable way, which, however, does not lead to faith, is to begin to get busy about not being able to make historically definite what it is one is to believe. The most reliable information is received in life peril, where one hears what one basically knows, with the clarity that only life peril provides. Because in life peril one becomes infinitely ready to hear, and is infinitely close to what one is to hear. Everyone who lives in Christendom ordinarily has received more than enough information about Christianity. Even the government sees to that. Many perhaps have received all too much. What is lacking is certainly something entirely different, is the inner transformation of the whole mind by which a person in life peril of the spirit comes in earnest, in true inwardness, to believe at least something of the considerable Christianity that he knows. Ordinarily, everyone who lives in Christendom has unconditionally enough knowledge about Christianity to be able to invoke and supplicate, to be able to turn in prayer to Christ. If he does that with the need of inwardness and in honesty of heart, he surely will become a believer if only it is altogether definite before God that this person feels the need to believe, he will very definitely find out what he is to believe. The opposite is, without a need to believe, to go on researching, ruminating, and pondering, more and more wanting nigglingly to waste year after year of one's life, and finally, one's eternal salvation, on getting absolutely and precisely definite, down to a dot over a letter, what one is to believe. This opposite is empty shadow boxing that merely becomes more and more self-important. 
or it is a scholarly, learned practice in the wrong place, therefore a scholarly, learned malpractice, or it is cowardly, inhuman, and to that extent also ungodly pusillanimity. I like this little quotation. Thanks for listening.